The purpose of this video is to explain the operation of an antenna known as a ZEP, shown here in the lower diagram, common uh, at ham radio frequencies between about 1.8 and 30 megahertz. The ZEP antenna is popular also among shortwave listeners, the short waves being regarded as 3 to 30 megahertz or thereabouts. A ZEP antenna is a half wave length of wire fed at the end, usually with a quarter wavelength of open wire or balanced transmission line, although you can use a longer length of line if you incorporate an antenna tuner, also known as a transmatch, between the feed line and the radio to match or to get rid of the reactants that you would get if you use some other length besides this one quarter wave. But that's the design basically of a ZEP antenna. A half wavelength say at 40 meters 7 megahertz is about 66 feet uh, on the uh, 80 meter ham radio band 3.5 megahertz it's about twice that or 132 feet well the main uh, thing about a zep antenna that distinguishes it from most other types is the way that it's fed it's fed at the end and that confuses a lot of people because they don't really understand it's difficult to grasp how you can actually get an antenna to feed uh, to accept power by feeding it at the end. Uh, so rather than think of this as an end-fed antenna fed by balanced line, we can think of it in another way. Let's uh, go and look at a half-wave open dipole antenna design, which is also a commonly used antenna among ham radio operators on the frequency bands between 1.8 and 30 megahertz. It's a half wavelength of wire fed in the center, usually with coaxial cable these days, but open wire line can also be used. Any length, a transmatch is generally necessary if you feed an antenna like this with open wire transmission line because the characteristic impedance of that line is not the same uh, anywhere near the same as the characteristic uh, uh, as the impedance at the center of a dipole. This impedance is typically 73 ohms theoretically, it, although it can vary between maybe 60 and 80 ohms of pure resistance. Okay, so here we have a half wavelength dipole. You've probably seen the theory behind this. It's fed at what is known as a current loop. If you consider the current distribution on an antenna like this, look something like that. Maximum at the center and zero at the ends. That's a current loop. These are current nodes. Now the voltage distribution on this antenna is exactly uh, opposite to the current. The voltage is maximum at the ends and minimum at the center. Well, the same thing is true in a Zeppelin antenna. Maximum current in the center of the radiator and theoretically zero at the ends. So that's what confuses people. How can you feed power into an antenna when there's no current at the feed point. That is a is kind of a befuddlement. Well, that's why I'm going to show you a little bit of a different scheme. Let's modify this half wave dipole. Let's add another half wavelength. On one end of it like this. Now what we have is a full wavelength antenna fed off center. Now by adding this half wavelength we get a current distribution that looks something like this. 
on the just the same as the ordinary dipole here but when we go to the extended half wavelength side we get the rest of a full cycle like that so what we get forget that little line going up like that that doesn't have anything to do with anything so what we get here is a current distribution like that okay well that's what we get if we feed a full wavelength antenna one quarter wavelength from one end well in a way this is just a modified zep or we can think of a zep as just a modified version of this antenna let's take away this take away this take away the transmission line and suppose that we just put our radio right here no feed line well that's an ideal state of affairs if you can work it out you know you, you don't have any feed line loss if you don't have any feed line so if you put the radio right there you're going to get a pretty good result uh, uh, probably an impedance on the order of 80 to 100 ohms or thereabouts pretty good match for most radios in fact most uh, ham radios have built-in tuners that can deal with that okay fine well let's take this quarter wavelength section now and just fold it over the remaining part of the antenna like that now what we have is in effect an end fed half wavelength antenna fed with open wire transmission line just like this in fact this is a ZEP antenna right here let's uh, let's group this together and move it we can compare it to the ZEP just like that the only difference is that instead of coming off at a right angle the feed line comes off straight in line with the half wavelength part of the wire well the interesting thing about all that let's uh, just center this a little better in the in the frame the interesting thing about all this is that it really doesn't matter very much whether the feed line comes off at a right angle or whether it's right in line with the wire in fact it's gonna work a little better if it's right in line with the wire because you will get less induced radio frequency current on this transmission line with the upper arrangement here than you will get with this arrangement so in fact you can think of a ZEP antenna as a modified off-center fed full wavelength antenna it's just partly folded around on itself like that so what you get is currents in these two parallel wires that run exactly equal in amplitude but opposite in direction at every point thereby creating a cancellation of the electromagnetic field around this transmission line right here so in effect this part of the antenna becomes the feed line and the remaining part of the antenna behaves just the way it would if we had a full wavelength off-center fed antenna the only difference is that you're going to see somewhat of a different impedance at this point right here instead of maybe 80 ohms or 100 ohms you're going to see an impedance that's very very low a resistive impedance that's very very low so in fact you might be better off extending this transmission line a little bit longer and using a transmatch an antenna tuner that can handle that very low resistance that you will see at that point because instead of being maybe three or four ohms it might be 30 or 40 or 50 uh, you'll get reactants if you extend that line but it won't be such a a problem if you have an antenna tuner to tune it out so
You can think of a ZEP antenna like this as an end-fed half-wavelength wire, and you're driving it at a current node, feeding power into it where the current is theoretically zero, or you can think of it as actually being fed right here, and it's just a modified full-wavelength off-center fed antenna fed at a current loop. And it's easy to imagine how this point right here can accept power because there's a high current there. Actually, uh, you can think of a ZEP as working either way. The, the important thing is that it works. And the cool thing about a ZEP antenna like this, where you have the transmission line in line with the radiating portion of the antenna, is that you can use a captive balloon or a kite to support an antenna of that sort. You can also dangle it from a hot air balloon if you want to get into a hot air balloon and get on the ham radio bands and raise a ruckus. Once they hear they're talking to somebody in a hot air balloon, everybody will everybody want to talk to you then. That's the way it works on the ham radio bands. It's kind of interesting. It's fun to do if you can play that game. But anyway, oh, you do have to be careful if you fly an antenna like this with a captive balloon or a kite that you anchor it properly. You don't fly it during thunder showers, obviously, for pretty obvious reasons. And you don't make it too long because the Federal Aviation Administration in the United States might have a problem if you make it too long. So you need to check with the Federal Aviation Administration before you use a kite or a balloon to fly a ZEP antenna. Of course, you can always uh, render the ZEP antenna the old-fashioned way, like this. And again, this doesn't necessarily have to be a quarter of a, of a wavelength long. Now, isn't that cute? That looks kind of neat. That's a little different than the ellipses that I've been drawing. Just thought I'd do that to give you a little variety. Anyway, this is the explanation that I like to, uh, f to tell you how a ZEP antenna can actually function when it seems like, intuitively, it couldn't.